So lots of celebrations there in New York, setting the stage in a way for yoga becoming part of Indian soft power, as it's being called. My first guest in the moment is Syed Akbaruddin, India's former permanent representative to the United Nations. Uh, Akbaruddin, you were probably there, uh, I think, as spokesperson and later at the uh, uh, United Nations when Prime Minister Modi had first spoken about International Yoga Day. Are you surprised with the kind of enthusiasm it's evoked? Do you believe yoga symbolizes in a way rising Indian soft power? Uh, you're on mute. So Rajdeep, you're right. Um, I was there and so were you yes. um, in 2014. Um, when uh, in 2015, uh, uh, when, uh, sorry, in 2014 when Prime Minister made the announcement in September. Having said that, um, you know, diplomacy is always part substance, part style. Um, there is pageantry, but there is also content. Um, the UN, uh, most people think, is only about content. Uh, but that's not true, because um, the UN has a convening power, which far exceeds its uh, ability to implement content. So what uh, that uh, um, decision in September which was translated into a resolution in uh, November, did was it set a norm of celebrating yoga globally uh, on a specific day. Uh, what it then did was, it's not that India was new to norms. Uh, we had very many contributions in norms, but those were part of the diplomatic lexicon, for example, peace, nonviolence, etc. But Yoga was never in the diplomatic lexicon until 2014. Um, it's a, a cultural tradition in India, but it's now globally embraced. So uh, certainly um, the International Day of Yoga, which Prime Minister himself initiated, I must uh, confess that, it was not a bureaucratic or a civil service initiative. It was his own initiative. He pushed it through. And I'm not surprised because uh, even when I was there, he, every time I would meet him, he would say, don't forget the yoga day. Keep, it should it's not be a one-off event. Uh, keep pushing at it every year. So it's not surprising. It's now perhaps the most celebrated international um, day at the UN. So how does it though, you said diplomacy of course is about both style and substance in a way. How does yoga really contribute your... You, to India's presence at the United Nations. For the longest time, India has cribbed about the fact that, you know, we do not seem to have the kind of position on the high table, not part of the UN Security Council, often not part of major negotiations at the UN. How does yoga contribute to India getting a more recognized place at the UN headquarters? So, uh, Rajdeep, you're looking at diplomacy at the UN in a very narrow sense. Mm -hmm. In the narrow sense, the UN is an executive arm which promotes peace and security and other elements of uh, global co uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. But in a broader sense, it sets norms. And for example, the UN doesn't contribute any money to uh, sustainable development. Mm -hmm. The UN doesn't contribute anything to climate change. But what it does is it sets norms, it pushes those norms, it acts as a force multiplier for those norms to gain global recognition. Mm -hmm. And yes, in the executive arm, uh, we've fallen short. And that's by a quirk of history. We were not there at the inception. And so we are still struggling. But in many other respects, uh, we've done very well. Mm -hmm. We are non-setters. So let's start looking at non-setting as a critical element of uh, a global diplomacy. And norms do play a role. Uh, they have an impact well beyond what you and I think, because you can see that the public engagement in such events like the Yoga Day far exceeds any discussions of a nature where the UN is not succeeding. In, in that sense, uh, Syed Akbaruddin, do you believe this gives India, you know, I call it soft power, but does it give India some kind of an edge, cutting edge, when it comes to in comparison to our bigger neighbor, uh, China, which has used its... Uh, it's marketing, it's commercial power in a way uh, to leverage itself across the world uh, and, and sets us apart, particularly from the Pakistanis, who for the longest time there was a sense of the two countries uh, being hyphenated. Has the dehyphenation now been complete? And does yoga in a way give us a cutting edge 
over other countries uh, who's, uh, who perhaps see business as their way to, uh, to reach out to the world, China in specifically. So the easy answer is about Pakistan. Pakistan is yesterday's um, issue for India. We've moved far ahead. Mm -hmm. Nobody at the UN or in the global community equates India with Pakistan, either in terms of cultural tradition or uh, comprehensive power. China, yes, it's a power in terms of, um, like you said, financial clout, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, um, a comprehensive power. Uh, but that doesn't always e translate into um, uh, abilities to uh, gain uh, support. Uh, and we've seen that time and again. For example, mm -hmm. we contribute 0.7% of the UN budget, Rajdeep. Mm -hmm. China contributes something like 13%. Nobody sees that India and China are about 13 per, uh, times differential at, uh, in the activities at the UN. So software has a role. Uh, it is a bridge. It can be leveraged. It is not a compensation or a uh, substitute for hard power, but it can enhance a country to uh, punch above its weight. And that's what it's doing for India in terms of Yoga has contributed because every aspect of yoga can be linked with the, US, uh, the UN's goals, whether it's sustainable development, whether it's sustainable livelihood, whether it's climate change, whether it's peace, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is collaboration uh, in the form of cooperation with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So it does have a role, but I don't think that we should equate the two differential power uh, uh, equations are at the same level. They are different. Each has its role, and we are very, doing very well in the soft game. Right. Uh, Syed Akbaruddin, uh, even as you speak, those are pictures, of course, of Prime Minister Modi now leaving for Washington, where this visit comes. Just a final question. Do you, therefore, as someone who's tracked this relationship closely, both at the UN with the US, see this now as a, a turning point, a decisive point, as some people are suggesting? Or is this part of a continuum that is building India's reputation in the United States and at the UN? Um, so, Rajdeep, um, the world is in a different phase these days. Uh, we use terminologies like chip choking, uh, like um, um, uh, friend shoring. Mm -hmm. um, in both these, we are not on the wrong side of history. We are not being choked for chips. We are being um, attracted for uh, shoring of uh, industries. So, I think we are on the right track. Uh, mm -hmm. it will, it's a relationship that has been built by many people who have contributed, but it could well be a game changer because technology, energy, um, um, uh, issues of defense nature are uh, some things that we, uh, we desperately need um, inputs from. And if a relationship with the US um, uh, helps us improve that, then it's all for the better. Like the US has said that they are looking at a small yard with big fences. Mm -hmm. um, we, the yard is open for us, otherwise we would have been behind the fences. So let's hope it is a direct, it's a pathway towards a much better ties between the two countries, which have already been at a trajectory right. where all of us can make out uh, it's on a growth path. Let's leave it there, uh, uh, Syed Akbaruddin, for giving us a sense of what this means, particularly at the United Nations with which you've been closely associated in recent times. I appreciate you joining me here.